So start with things like, you know, office furniture. If you can do a mat under your chair so it rolls around, that's nice as well. And I love a glass mat. Lighting is super important. You know, make sure you have task lighting, overhead lighting, whatever is comfortable for you. And just set yourself up for success with the physical things first. You know, if you need a shredder, if you need a waste paper basket, if you, you know, just make a list and kind of brainstorm it out and, and do ask if those things could be provided for you at the company's expense. Welcome to the Good Life Coach Podcast. I am your host, Michelle Lamoureux. The intention of this show is to awaken you to your fullest potential. Join me each week for inspiring interviews to elevate an area of your life, as well as interviews with women entrepreneurs who are creating success on their own terms. Each episode provides actionable tips to guide you to design a life you love. Hey there, it's Michelle Lemereau, and welcome back to the latest season of the Good Life Coach podcast. I'm so excited to be back with you all with all new guests and actually some repeat guests who are favorites of yours, including today's Gerilyn Thomas. She's an American organizing consultant and is best known for her appearances on the television show Hoarders. She's the proprietor of Metropolitan Organizing, which is based in North Carolina. She's also the author of two books. One of her books, Decluttering Your Home, has been translated into 12 languages. And Gerilyn is a business resource for small business owners, specifically aspiring professional organizers, but you also do one-on-one career coaching and um, essential business forms for professional organizers. And you just ha- like love helping any small business or owner simplify their processes, systems, and strategies. Welcome, Gerilyn. Thanks so much, Michelle. Yeah, I do. I love the whole, I don't know. I think it's a um, trait for most professional organizers. I think we have like that nurturing thing going where we want to take care of people and get them all squared away and make their life easier. It's a very common theme. I don't know what en- Enneagram, is that how you say it? Yes. Personality we would be, but that would be kind of fun to figure out. Oh, that's interesting. I might be interviewing somebody on that. Somebody told me what they thought mine was and I've always been curious about it. So yes. yeah, we'll have to find out what the, what, yeah, maybe there is a common, uh, Enneagram number associated with organizers. But what I find fun about you too is we were going to get connected and um, you sent me the most detailed, organized bio headshot, you know, topic areas. And I thought I've literally have over 200 interviews, never had anything so like perfectly like set up for me in advance. So <laughs> thank, <laughs> say, you. thank you. Uh, you know, I feel like um, it makes me feel good to make other people's jobs easier. Mm-hmm. And whenever I can do that, I just love it because I feel like if I can queue it up for you and then you could say, well, that wasn't what I was looking for. But, you know, I, I just feel like people are so crunched for time that it's nice to be able to help them out. Totally. And I always use stuff like this as a roadmap, but I always love the organic conversations, which, you know, we, we d- dived into last time because you were yes. on and we talked about how to organize your closet and really just streamline getting ready and out the door. And I recently re- recently replayed that one. And it's funny because somebody did a lovely review of the interview with you, just like, just saying how you help them so much, which makes me feel so good. And actually, I think two of my reviews on Apple podcasts are about you, Gerilyn. Oh my gosh. Well, that almost makes me get choked up. Thank you. Yes. It's it's really nice. I, I think most people either really enjoy this or don't enjoy it at all, right? There are very few like in the middle could take it or leave it. But when you find what you're saying resonates with somebody, it's the best feeling in the world. And we don't know where people are in their life, right? So sometimes it's giving them a little clip or, or a tip or a guide, like use this, you know, if you haven't worn it and you put it on 15 times, I know you and I talked about all the fun stuff, yeah. dressing for who we used to be, dressing for who we think we want to be. Yes. That was fun. Yes, totally. It is. And I think, I know when I walk in and the house cleaners left and everything's in its place, Oh. I just feel so much lighter and whether or not somebody's really into organization or 
you know, wants to improve in it, I think it's undeniable how good you feel when everything has its place or you're not looking around with stuff just screaming at you, just like feeling overwhelmed. And I think it impacts mood. And if you're feeling kind of cranky, look around your kitchen, look around, like maybe there's just too much clutter that's accumulated. Right. And here's a little story. Uh, I had uh, two boys back to back, 14 months apart, right? So um, I tell anybody who, especially the moms out there listening, that was the hardest time in my life because that feeling you just described of looking around and having this nice, clean, tidy, organized, sort of tranquil vibe, it doesn't exist for parents with littles, right? And 100%. All of that plasticky equipment, brightly colored stuff, it really did jumble my mind. I found that I was a little cantankerous because there were bottles, there were those jumpy seats, the things that you hook on the doorway to get them to jump up and down, bouncies, high chairs. It was just, it was hard on me. So yes, I feel for parents with really young little people running around their house and they have no control. The baby controls the house, right? hundred percent. And I think I'm really glad you said that because I think, yes, you get a pass when the kids are little and that toddler stage, like either you're going to be with them or you're going to be cleaning up 24 seven. So you might as well enjoy your kids when they're little and play with them (laughs) and just figure out a way to deal with the mess. But now we're in like a new time where we've gone through COVID, the whole landscape of work changed. Like overnight, where suddenly like no one was going into an office and people like now don't even have been invited back into an office. So I think, and I'd love to get your input based on what you're seeing, but my sense of it is it's sort of a hybrid situation where maybe people are going in one to three days a week and then they're home one to three days, you know, somewhere in between there that they're trying to do a situation. And today we're really going to try to tackle the whole, whole work from home scenario. And maybe there's two partners, maybe it's you and your spouse, your partner, your roommate, whatever. And And you're just trying to figure it out how to make that work. Right. And let me throw in one more scenario that is probably more common than a lot of us are thinking it is, is that the, um, I'll call them adult children that went off to college may or may not be employed right now due to COVID. Mm. Yeah. So they've moved back in and now they're being hired, but they're working from home. Okay. So that now you have in some homes, three adults working and trying to find privacy and space and set up. It's not easy. It's really challenging and it's um, emotionally taking its toll on people. Yeah. Right. Cause there's everyone, well, hopefully loves being around their family, but too much of that when, everyone wants their privacy and their space and their work to be respected. It's like, wait a second. And, you know, there might be a spouse who's not working, who's home in and out and trying to like take care of the pets and the other kids and doing the groceries and trying to tidy up. And it's, you know, so, so you tell me where, where do we start? Because this could be overwhelming for um, anyone. And like even the roommate situation too, right? I mean, you could have Two oh, young yeah. people who just graduated from college sharing, you know, an apartment or, and yes. they're both, both working from sons, home or part of it, right. both of your sons. Both of my sons are in that predicament. So uh, uh, they and their roommates are all working from home and they're in teeny tiny little apartments. So yes. it's, you know, the other thing is there's just no privacy. So I have a client um, who's a therapist yeah, and she was telling me that part of the challenge right now that she's hearing about the line of work she's in is people want to do the tele appointments, the telemed stuff. Yes. But they don't want to go in person anymore. Right. But the people that are um, seeking therapy are in a place where there's no privacy. So there's three or four family members and they're trying to whisper. So she was just saying it's really difficult. Now people got used to staying at home, but they're not um, as forthcoming with what's going on in their lives. So she said, you know, you can feel that through a call, but when you're yeah. one-on-one in an office, you're much more open and vulnerable and she body language. And 
you know, it's, I don't know, it's just changed so many things, but back on topic. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're still on topic. It's just a matter of like, help us, you know, because yes. now, right. These are the various scenarios and I'm sure there's others that we haven't even identified, but anybody who's doing work from home, or if you're the spouse or, you know, you know, the roommate or something who's not employed or not working from home, but your person you're living with is, you know, like, how do we start navigating all of this? This work well, from home the, scenario. Um, one of the things to do is if you do have the luxury of separating your spaces a little bit, yes, that is that's the beginning point. And one of the tidbits that I'm trying to share with people that I'm working with virtually or back in person is if you are one of these um, remote work people, I do think there's a nice, polite, professional way to ask your employer, your, the person you report to, can they provide a desk, a chair, a mm -hmm. monitor, a microphone, a camera, a light, all of these things, because there, are, I cannot even tell you dozens of people that I know right now that are working like in a hard kitchen chair or a dining room chair, less than ideal for, you know, body activity ergonomics. <laughs> so Just for comfort, right? Yes. So yeah, their backs might be killing too. <laughs> yes. From and your desk is, you know, your desk is your kitchen table. So it's too high, too low. Um, so start with things like, you know, office furniture. If you can do a mat under your chair, so it rolls around, that's mm -hmm. nice as well. And I love a glass mat. Lighting is super important. The, um, you know, make sure you have task lighting, overhead lighting, whatever is comfortable for you. And just set yourself up for success with the physical things first. You know, if you yeah. need a shredder, if you need a waste paper basket, if you, you know, just make a list and kind of brainstorm it out and, and do ask if those things could be provided for you at the company's expense. I think that's great. I mean, if you were going into the office, right, you would have all of that. You're not bringing your own desk and chair lighting, right. into the, maybe lighting. I don't know. Lighting's not that expensive. Maybe we could put some links. Like we both do. Are you using a ring light? Yes, I am. Uh -huh. Yeah. We're both using a ring light for this. So if this, if, and when this ends up up on YouTube, people will see, you know, but it does make a difference. It does help. And I think, you know, it's interesting because you want to feel professional and having more of a professional feeling setup is going to also change your mindset. I mean, I don't know how people are dressing to work now. Like if it's, if they're at home, if they're like maybe more formal on top and maybe more casual on the bottom, I probably is my guess. Yes. yes. But I think, you know, that also impacts how you feel about your work and yourself, right? Absolutely. And I do, the people that I'm working with at least have told me that they are happier not having to dress up and not having to commute. Mm. So they like some parts of that. Yes. But especially for people who just graduated from college and starting a new job and they're working from home. It's not great for building relationships and getting to know each other. A lot of very important conversation and bonding happens on those trips to and from the coffee room or the break room to and from the bathroom where you, somebody see, you know, there's a meeting going on and they say, Hey, Michelle, I saw you walk by. Can you, can I pull you in here for a few minutes and get you some ideas or your opinion on something? That spontaneity is gone when yeah. we're working from home. Yeah. But you know, what's funny. I have a friend who told me that she goes into the office two to three days a week. Uh -huh. And when there's meetings, everybody zooms in from their office. They don't even go to the conference room. <laughs> Yeah. And, well, we've definitely become more comfortable behind a screen. But the, I think I'm not really a fan of that. That's a different show. That's a yeah, different that, show, that is but different it's show, for right. sure, uh, you know, a part of all this, because I do yes. think, you know, the connection, whether you're getting that through a screen. And so, like you said, with the lighting and the right setup, it's going to create more of that feeling. Like I'm looking at you, you've got a beautiful, vibrant orange chair, some pretty, orange flowers in the back. It's actually really soothing. Like it's, it's, and you just look beautiful. So it's well, just like, you. just like, you know, Geraldine's lovely smile. And I'm like, oh, it's so nice connecting with Geraldine, but there's a vibe coming from the yes. environment. Yes. Right. So, Absolutely. I mean, people are only going to be able to do the best they can, but maybe they even do put like, are those fake flowers or real? These are glass flowers, but these are real plants. Okay. Yeah. Just Perfect. like something, you know, a little pop a color or color. something in, yeah. yeah, in the corner oh. or something like that. Um, I really think that the like 
orange is my happy color. Yeah. <laughs> so it's very energizing to me. But, you right, have but to you're bringing what. some of you to uh, like this interview, right? And yeah. so people have yes. the opportunity to do that as well. All right, right. so we're going to ask the office for all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us more. What else should we be thinking about? Well, if when I'm you know, going to help a small business owner, I would start by, you know, do you feel like there's a need to declutter anything in your life? And, you know, that's always a big, ah, thank you. Okay. Where can we start? Again, people are just so overwhelmed. Now it's personal stuff, home stuff, you know, uh, business stuff. Everything is on their kitchen table, kitchen counter, dining room table, whatever. So, yeah. I say let's just start with the 3 Ds. This okay. to me is a little more manageable and you have to believe me. I am not a techie person, so I like to keep it, you know, low hanging fruit first. Let's pick those. Yes. So, um start maybe with the desktop. Okay. And start decluttering. And again, just from personal experience, what I see is people have thousands of things on their desktop. So that's the D number one desktop. Wait, just to clarify though, are you talking your actual top of your desk or are you talking about on your laptop? Laptop. That's what I thought you meant. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cl- yeah. Clean that. Oh yeah, for sure. Right. So you've got yes. you know, thousands um, of tabs open. PDFs and yes, right. So I'm going to, I'll give you the three Ds so that'll, you know, make it nice and organized for everybody. Yes. <laughs> the desktop, your digital data and your downloads folder. To me, those are three doable things. And I, I understand the digital data, photos, contacts, you know, that can be time consuming and yes. overwhelming, especially photos. People, I can put them in touch with women who specialize with photo organizers who know how to do this much more swiftly than I wow. would ever do. But, you know, when you're in the grocery store in a line or in a drive through line, just pull up your phone and start deleting photos that are not necessary. And I'm the queen of doing screenshots for a million different reasons. Me too. So eventually you just have to go declutter those, right? I yes. play Wordle every day with some a group of people yes. and screenshot what we're doing and you know I'm hilarious. Thinking, oh yeah, we've been doing yeah. that at night. Yeah. And then <laughs> sending like the bars of like how many it took us. Yes. And it's like that we're just doing that with my husband and daughter. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want this in my text inbox. Let's just stop sending me those. You guys send it to yourself. <laughs> right. 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 Yes. And contacts, there are programs you can run to pick out the duplicates oh, nice. or people you haven't talked to, you know, in 10 years or something like you, you don't even remember who these people are. 100%. So yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. So the digital data, also social media, think of that, okay. you know, go through and defriend or. I'm not on Facebook so much, but I do really enjoy Twitter. So I had some time on my hands and I thought, well, I'm going to go through my Twitter lists because, you know, I like everything hyper-organized. I have lists. So I have SEO, artificial intelligence, other organizing people, people who do gardening and like, you know, all these things, clothing, fashion. So I just tidied that up quite a bit. To me, that's relaxing. Yes. It's not necessarily everybody's idea of fun. Right. Um, And then the other easy, I think, to declutter is your downloads folder. Okay. It's typically everyone's default when they download anything. So the downloads folder has (laughs) hundreds, if not thousands of things in there. And again, if you have time and the beverage of your choice, just come up with an organized system where you're going to put these things, all your downloads, and probably a lot of them can be deleted. Absolutely. And then the next time you go to download the, or whatever, start the new operating system and it tells you you don't have room, Yes, you've maybe deleted some of this stuff that, you know, I find all the photos and those downloads are what take up a lot of space. Absolutely. And a lot of times we're just almost forced to download things. We don't even need them. So go through and just move it to your trash can and then empty your trash can. Yes. Um, Let's back up just one sec. So we've got these systems, which of course I so appreciate. So is everyone just picking a spot in the house? Oh, to, to work. Yes. Depending on what's available. Yeah. Or maybe you have to say, I get nine to 12, you get whatever. And this, maybe somebody's got the nicer, who knows? 
hot desking. That's what hot, that's is called. Is that what they call it? There's a that's okay. what they call it, yeah. There's actually a term for that now? Okay, yes. hot desking. So, you know, I'll be sitting at this desk from 9 to 12, like you said, and then somebody has a Zoom call. So I would hop up. They'd sit here from, you know, 1 to 3. Then somebody else comes in and gets their homework done and, you know, whatever works. But it's a very um, challenging situation, to say the least. It can be stressful. But like you said, there's benefits to it. I know a lot of people who are so much happier, like you said, actually not, they prefer not to go into the office. My husband's entire company has been virtual from the beginning before COVID Oh, because his employees wow. are all over the place. So that's always worked for them because that's yes. how it started. So there was no actual transition, but that doesn't still mean that, you know, he has an office space that's not in the house. Like he started here and it right. just didn't work. So that's Another scenario, right? Renting yes, out and, space. and also networking, right? So for small business mm. owners, networking may or may not be very important to build their, you know, uh, brand awareness or yeah. meet other like-minded people in the community. And I'm finding that a lot of people don't want to network anymore. They don't want to fly out for conferences, summits, conventions, that kind of stuff. So it'll be interesting. I mean, nobody has a crystal ball. We don't know for sure, but you know, travel seems to be on the uptick again, but it's personal. Yes. Yeah. It's the personal travel that's on the uptick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. I hope that it, it cycles back. Cause like I just to loop back to what you said in the beginning, there's so many important things you learn from being in that office environment, especially if you just graduated from college, right. And to learn those skills and to have that. And also, I don't know, I don't know how that's going to impact people's, you know, how the promotions are done or, you know what I'm saying? Cause I think a lot of that happens is seeing how people interact in meetings and are able to show their leadership or their ideas. Cause some people may not know how to jump in also on a, on a zoom call. Oh my gosh. That's a whole nother level. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, Okay. So what about for a small business or owner organizing files and folders. You have a system for this too? I do. I do. And this is um, going to sound intimidating at first, but I had a conversation with a virtual assistant in Canada and we spent way too long because this is both, she's super nerdy and this was really fun to both of us. (laughs) Oh, the things we do. Yeah. So Jackie and I start chit chatting and I love to experiment on myself before I take it out to somebody else. So she almost presented this challenge. Well, I've adopted the challenge. I'm madly in love with this system and I'll, I'll give people different ideas on how to use this. But so I'm calling it the simple six. I have no idea if there's a formal name for this or whatever, but the first category, and this is going to apply to small business owners. Okay. So yes. category one. so I would literally label this file folder one administration. O2, finance. O3, human resources. O4, marketing. O5, operations. And O6, personal. Hmm. Now, a business owner like myself, I don't have human resources. I don't have employees. I don't have any of that stuff. But you can still apply the principles of what would go in there if you were in a bigger company. And you can treat your own business as if it's a bigger company. So some examples of what would go in the administrative file. Oh, and the double digits is crucial when you're labeling your files. Oh, one, oh, two. Don't do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because eventually those numbers are going to get a little wonky. You want to start with doubles, zero, okay. one, zero, two, because by the time you get to one, oh, yes, right. It starts. Falling. I got it. Okay. okay. Um, so things like templates, if you have an autoresponder, which you probably do as a podcast host, right? You must use templates, I'm sure. Um, for somebody like me, dog groomers, I have cupcake bakers, salon owners, here's our process. So this is what you would do. Step one is you're going to book on the calendar. Step two is you're going to pay. Step three is you're going to come in for your appointment or whatever, bring me your dog or something. If you have a letter of agreement, if you review, um, if you request reviews, hey, you got your dog groomed, come on in. And now would you leave us a review? People often don't know how to do that. So you're going to send them a review request. Okay. Going to give instructions. Okay. 
or maybe it's help wanted. You know, we're hiring independent contractors or we're hiring employees. And then your client information, you know, 2022 clients, 2023 clients, 2024 clients. So just keep it big and simple for now. I hope that's people. Finance people don't usually have too much trouble with this one. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I have some fun clients who will say things like anything scary or that could land me in jail. It's going in the financial That's thing. Hilarious. I'm like, right, because you yeah. at least know where to look for it. You totally. don't have to all over your computer. Yes. Human resources will keep this one short and sweet. Things like certificates or if you're volunteering for something that's sort of work related memberships to local and national organizations associated with your line of business, you know, maybe your national, whatever, that's where the human resources that would go into the human resources. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. And then marketing is for a lot of small business owner, their biggest, most abundant number of things are in the marketing. So I'll give you some examples. Anything to do with your branding, the colors, you know, the codes for print and web. Yes. um, Typography, logos, all of your images, including your headshots. And again, I advise people 2022 headshots, you know, 2018 headshots. Don't discard them. Just know where they are in case you want to do a, you know, look in the way back time machine. Totally. (laughs) Look in 2015. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Um, logos, uh, your bios, everybody needs short bios, long bios, bios for podcasts, bios for, you know, whatever, right, right. casual, formal, humorous. Yes. Um, and everyone should have that even like, you know, like a, an attorney or whatever, you know, some, it doesn't have to be a small business owner for this category. I'm thinking, right. This is like all your, right. if you're going to go doing a speaking engagement or pitching yourself for a speaking engagement. Yes. Or updating your website. You want to be yeah. able to, you know, easily transfer that file to somebody with your new updates. Now I've earned a new certificate or I've been awarded lawyer of the year or super lawyer or whatever. Yeah, they do. The super lawyers. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Things like social media, you know, the artwork banners, um, intros and outros for people who do YouTube scripts Yeah, and things like newsletters. You know, I I do a quarterly. So I have Q1 2022, Q2 2023. To Q3. So, you know, how whatever works for them, but these are just suggestions. Yes. And then operations. Um, I, I'll think I'll use book, somebody who's writing a book, right? That would be that type. It's a money making um, endeavor. Hopefully, you're making money on your book, although we all know that's hard to do. Mm-hmm. And then personal, usually we don't need too much explanation, but travel. Um, your lists, um, entertainment, books you want to read, podcasts you want to listen to, home projects, fitness, recipes, keepsakes, things like that. Yes. Okay. That's all fantastic. And that may not apply to everyone who's listening if they're not a small business owner or whatever. But I was, as I was listening to you, I was thinking you could work in an organization and you still should have some of these files, yes. Yes. You know, especially if you have to do any business development of your own to bring into the, to the company. Right. And one thing I'll share with um, your listeners right now is I think when it comes to filing stuff in people's computers, as well as their, you know, paper files, if they're still using paper, people create way too many files and folders, and then they can't find anything they need when they need it. Yes. Yes. Or they're not labeling it. That would be another thing I would say is have some sort of system and stick to it. Yes. And if you find like, oh, I don't have time to go back into ancient history and relabel everything, just create a folder that says prior to, you know, October, 2022, push everything everything in there there. and then start fresh. Love that. I love that. My dad, I remember at one point, he's like, just have a taxes folder. Yes. Anything that comes in that has to do with your taxes. And honestly, it saved me so much time instead of being like, right. oh, this applies to this. It doesn't matter. My business, my husband's business, personal, t- just tax related, bank statements, whatever that come in, I just yes. shove it in. And when it's time, it makes, you know, getting that stuff to the accountant so much simpler. A hundred percent. And that's what we're aiming for here. It yes. doesn't have to be perfect. Right. 
it's it's not organized. It's just literally yeah. shoved in there until I need to then make sure yes. I have all the documents and then I can go through and check off from his checklist. Right. And to right. make sure, I love that. I love just simplifying. You had six folders there. Done. Done. And if you can't figure it out, don't create a bunch a of new ones. Yeah, I would still keep that go. back in yeah. the day. <laughs> <laughs> Papers are my nemesis, Sherilyn. They're not my there favorite. Like, a lot of people. Yeah. Just can't keep up with that. Where I'm looking at a, a folder right there, literally with papers just like fly. I was just like, I, I gotta deal with that. And we put it off. So what if what if we do tend to procrastinate on some of these tasks because we're not naturally organized, or we just hate, we just don't like doing it because it's not fun. Yes. Let's be it's honest, it's not fun. Right. So, I mean, the the thing is, I say work with what works for you. So figure out if you're a morning person or a late night person, work when you are at your best and, and go in knowing, right? Set yourself up for success. So I'm a morning person and I'm the type of personality. And, and then this, you know, doesn't mean it's true, but I'm the type of person that likes to tackle the big ornery tasks first yes. versus the type of person that says, I'm the type of person that likes to accomplish and check off as many things on my to-do list. And then I'll save that hard thing for last. Right. Which keeps There's... getting pushed off to the next day and the next month. Yes. Right. Isn't that the Absolutely. tendency? Yeah. And then figure out why you're procrastinating. So there are different reasons and we have different behaviors when we're procrastinating. So we'll go back to college students, right? At the beginning, the professor may say, oh, you have a 30 page term paper due, uh, whatever date the semester ends. Don't wait till the last minute to do it. Well, we all know, right? (laughs) A lot of people will just push that until the end. And then it's just, you know, they have no life for five nights or something like that. That's right. They pull the all-nighters. I was guilty of that, but I will say, do you know anything about Myers-Briggs? Because I think that plays into it. Okay. Because I'm qualified to administer that. And I know that I'm a perceiver, which leaves things open-ended. We need a deadline and Uh need a sense of urgency. So if it's a month out, it's still not urgent in your head, but I've learned to to overcome that, but not in college. Mm -mm. I was in the Mac lab all the time, last minute. And, and sometimes we procrastinate. Um, let's I've go called the to- Mac lab. People are like, what's that? That's when nobody had their own computers and you'd go right. into the, right? Where they had the Macintoshes. And- oh yeah. 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 That was the deal, right? Yes. Um, and sometimes we procrastinate because we don't know how to do something. And this is, I think, mm. why a lot of people hire organizers. Um, we'll, we'll go back to your tax example. I don't do my own taxes. I don't know how to do my own taxes. It's complicated. It's boring. It's a snooze to me. There are other people that that is their jam, right? Sure. But when I'm tasked with something like that, I suddenly become super productive doing things that don't need to be done. Oh my gosh, I'm going to match up all my pots and pans and put the lids on and clean out my Tupperware. Then I'm going to go to the junk drawer. Then I'm going to test batteries. I mean, I get a zillion things done when something is hanging over my head that I don't know how to do that. hundred percent. Yeah, that's a great example. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. We can all, I think, relate to that. Yeah. Um, Having a difficult conversation with somebody. Oh, you need to, maybe your roommate needs to... um, pay half the bill and, or maybe maybe it's really big like you're you want to leave somebody right i don't want to be your friend or i want to leave the marriage or the relationship or whatever that we could procrastinate for a long time right it, we know it's going to be a yucky conversation we don't want to start it up it has to be the timing is right but we're going to do other things meanwhile and sometimes you know people sabotage themselves doing those other things so very important to pay attention Oh, identify it. I'm procrastinating. Why am I doing what I'm doing right now? Or maybe you're doing nothing. Right. Take a look at what your patterns are around procrastination. Because then once you have the awareness, you can go, okay, this is my pattern. Now I can just adjust it. I'll take Geraldine's advice and I'll just tackle the uncomfortable conversation, whatever, filing challenge, whatever it might be, and get it done. Correct. And then you'll feel better on the other side of it. It's just starting. That's not, that's hard. 
Right. And if you have trouble getting motivated, and again, a lot of people contact organizers for this. So I'll give you some of the tips that I do when I work with people. Yeah. Stand, don't sit. Standing at a counter to sort your papers or through an emotional issue. You know, now we know that if you're going to have a standing meeting, it's going to end much sooner than a sit down meeting. Interesting. (laughs) Yeah. So stand, lower the temperature in your home. Okay. And sorry for anybody who doesn't have AC right now, (laughs) but cooler makes you more energetic and you stay a little peppier. Um, Smell something that is energizing. So typically people are energized by the smells of coffee, mint, um, grapefruit, lemon, and lime. Hmm. So spray something, light a candle, just get your mojo going. And then something that works for a lot of my clients when we take a break, you know, you can see them fading is I'll say, okay, go brush your teeth. Like stand up, brush your teeth. There's something, you know, some people say take a shower. Some huh. people do jumping jacks, but it's sort of like a reset. Yeah, it's, it's a freshening up and you feel a little lighter and brighter and happier. And plus, you know, Dennis love that advice. <laughs> I love that advice. Who loved yeah. that advice? Yes, I, I. Yeah, what did you say? Who loved it? You said Dennis? Oh, dentists. Yeah. Oh, dentists. Yeah. I think yes. you said Dennis. I'm like, who's Dennis? Oh, um, no, I'm dentist. sorry. No, no, that's funny. Oh, that's hilarious. I'm sure they love that advice. Um, yeah. And what about um, playing music? Like I sometimes will put on a podcast, you know, maybe one of those longer ones yes. that takes you a couple hours to get through or something. And I was like, okay, so if I can, if I don't have to be thinking too critically and I can be listening, right? Do you, do, how about that? Or like fun music? A hundred percent. And there are so many really cool playlists of um, lo-fi beat music on Spotify for this Mm. exact, some people call it focus music. So just search, you know, something like Spotify um, because the playlists are amazing. Or if you like, you know, more peppy, happy, whatever music, some people like classical music. So yes. just find, find what motivates you, but that's great. Yeah. Sunshine, you know, some people work better in a bright, sunny room. I know that's me. I have to have, you know, all the lights on bright and sunny shutters open. Right. Right. Whatever work, whatever works to motivate you to get it, to get it done. Yes. Um, what other systems typically re- require attention? Anything else? Um, well, I would say something like, um, you know, check your tabs, right? We have tab hoarders out there. I'm sure you have 1200 tabs open. So every once in a while you could, there's a little thing you save all your tabs as bookmarks. I don't recommend that because then there's another task associated with that, right? Go clean up your bookmarks, Right. but, um, go through your tabs, undo them, shut your computer down, reboot, reboot yourself and your computer, start fresh. Um, inbox, that's something that makes uh, people, I know. <laughs> I, I just, wish I could have just seen your face. Oh, Michelle. inbox, Gerilyn. I mean, every time yeah. I look, it's like you have 10,000. I do. My inbox is literally like, t- at this point, I just leave it. Like at this point, is it worth deleting? I mean, it might make me feel better to like, have just the 10 most relevant, you know, but it's just, they're just there. I just, yeah. do you categorize your incoming? No, no. I don't do you have a lot know. of newsletters that you're, <laughs> I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'm like, oh, no good. Cause you use thought. me as like, an example. Use me as right. an example. Uh, I, what is it? I should look, I mean, there's days where I'm like, oh wait, you know, I'll sign up for all the like store stuff, like my favorite yes. stores. And I'm like, unsubscribe, 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 because it's just filling up my inbox. Um, I remember being at my um, high school reunion, whatever, however many years ago, my 25th or whatever it was. And somebody's like, it says you have 40,000, like, you know, in my inbox. And I did. And it stressed whoever it was out. I was like, I don't know. I just don't look at that number anymore. Well, let me challenge you with a question. Would you, how does it make you feel to declare email bankruptcy. Like, what does that mean? Does it lose them all? Go to trash, shift everything to trash and start fresh. Would that give you a panic attack? Uh, in my business folder, it might, because there may be like, you know, some threads that I need to connect. Probably in my personal inbox, zero, like trash it all. Right. So then I do that. Idea. Can you yeah. do that? I can do it. Can you do it? 
Well, I've done it where, but then you have to like select each page, right? And it's like, you're doing like 50 at a time. And that takes, I've done that before and it takes forever. Okay. So I would say, analyze what's in there. Think about unsubscribing. The other thing is have an email just for when you're shopping online or. Yes, I did that at one point. And then I never go into that inbox, which is funny. Because I know it's all okay. spam. It's yeah. all spam and I don't want, and I don't care about it. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm sure other people, well, maybe. And so your inbox is what? So if I emailed you today, what is your, how many? Are, are I'm looking your, right now, there's 15. And so how do you do that? You just delete I, them I'm as a they daily, come? Yeah, I'm a And do you have person. folders? And let's be honest, mm-hmm. do you ever go into those folders once you set I them up? I go in nonstop. As a matter of fact, When I fly, that is my time to really buckle down. I don't watch movies. I don't, I love to go in and I have a bad habit that I I'll tell you about, but don't do what I'm doing. I use my drafts folder as a to-do list. Oh, cute. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like (laughs) that. Don't do that. Right. Cause you already have enough emails, but I, I go in there pretty regularly. So when I travel, that's my thing. It's kind of like, I'm programmed to do that. So now. give us an example. What's in your folders? Like what is it similar categories um, or like I have a um I have folders that are like for receipts, anything I buy, and I have a double folder, right? So there's a little hierarchy, personal receipts and business receipts. Personal receipts, you know, you're at J Crew or whatever. Now that they're, they're like J Crew and Target are great. Well, they are so that. good. Yes. Because you don't need your receipt. You I love that. I lo- I'm number. so grateful for those stores ah, that just know. You just put in the card and they're like, oh yeah, no yeah. worries. Yeah, exactly. You're like, awesome. It's all going credited back if you're doing return. Yeah, yeah. You don't even well. have to pull out your credit card anymore. I love that. I do too. Okay, so receipts. I should look. Hold on a second. I'll I'll give you a live demo. Um, okay, I have, well, I have, first of all, I have it set up with my simple six. Admin, finance, human resources, marketing, operations, personal. And then I have a travel folder that's under personal. I have, um, oh, stuff to do with my website. That's always being revamped or something's going on. And I have a hold folder. So that's my zero, zero folder. Hold? So at, at hold. Um, I'm You're pending, right? I'm doing a podcast with you. We booked this in advance. I swiped the Zoom thing in there. I added it to my calendar, but I do a little safety backup. That's in my hold. Now that we've done this, I'll go in, trash it. Got it. It's done. Yeah. Something something that needs attention, It, it it's like I can't fix it right now. I can't. I'm waiting for something. I'm Got waiting it. for an event to happen. I'm right. waiting for a response. So that's my hold. Folder. And so you do it real time. So after we're done, you'll literally go in and delete it. And then that's yes. gone. That's it. And it's a habit. Okay. So for those of you who are like me, this is this is our goal. This is a goal that we can try to aspire to. And then for the rest of you, you're probably like Geraldine and have a beautifully clean <laughs> inbox and are like mortified that I'm, or, you know, horrified. Well, at my... I really don't think there's, there should be no shame in the game because we all do things differently, right? Yes. We just function differently. We think differently. Like you, you know, this, you're the Myers Briggs person. Yes. I do like, de- I like things clean and declared though. I really do. And then you wonder, did something get lost through, you know, when it's no longer on your inbox screen, do you have Gmail? What do you use? Yes. I use Gmail. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love the little colored, you know, I think they're called labels. I can never remember if they, each mail system calls them something different. Is it labels that they call? Anyway, you can, so my business stuff is blue. My personal stuff is purple. Cute. All right. I'm on that. (laughs) I'm totally on that. I mean, yeah, I think we've given everyone (laughs) so much to think about, but I think the inbox for many people is, is a big one. It's sort of like the papers. So that's, for me, it's like my inbox and my papers are the same category of, you know, resistance of dealing with and accumulation. And for people who are listening that are using Gmail, I have Um, I discovered this young woman on YouTube. She was a fourth grade teacher. I think she lives in Austin and her YouTube channel name is pocket full of primary. And I'll send you this link. Okay. This woman, I share her link with everyone that will listen. Who's confused by how to set up Gmail folders and files. I don't know how I don't. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll almost promise you that this woman is going to solve your problems. 
She's a teacher, so she's really good at explaining things. She's happy and peppy, has the best energy, um, pocket full of primary. And I think it's called How to Organize Files Folders in Google Drive. I'm on it. Yeah, good. And I'll list that. I'll list that on the show notes over at thegoodlifecoach.com. But Geraldine, if people want to find you and connect with you, um, tell us again about the kind of services you offer and where to find you. Okay. Um, I can be found at metropolitanorganizing.com or just Google my name, geraldinethomas.com. Either either way, you'll get to me. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Twitter and I'm on LinkedIn. The others, not so much. I'm rarely on Facebook, but I'm working with small business owners who mostly are in the startup phase and want to learn how to um, set up behind the scenes, the processes so that they can, most business owners know what they know, right? So if you're a dog groomer, a cupcake baker, uh, uh, whatever, you know how to do what you're doing landscaping, but you don't know how to set it up on the back end. That's what I love to help people with. Love it. I love it. Well, I'll definitely have that at the sh- on the show notes over at thegoodlifecoach.com. I love connecting with you. I love your energy and also just the systems that you put into place, your 3Ds and you know these things that are easy to remember. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly what you call it. The simple six, right? And your simple six. So um, super helpful. And now I'm feeling a little motivated to, uh, to do my inbox. I will keep you updated if I, if I do it. I mean, the, the personal one, I could just, I could blow it up today. It'd be fine. It's totally, there's going to be nothing, Good. but the business one will, I'll have to find this woman online, but um, thank you for your time today. Always so fun to Welcome. be with you. And so um, fun. Uh, thanks for, yeah, the second time around. And we should give Kathy Vines a shout out who connected us, who's also been on the show a couple of times, another professional organizer who's just so helpful and lovely like you. So, so helpful. And she's the world's greatest at clarifying things. This is what a nice nurturing person she is. I was doing a presentation one time and the presenter changed the format of the slides. And I thought, oh my gosh, I have hours, hours into this. And I paid a VA to do it for me. I'm like, I don't have time to do this. And I'm not going to keep paying a VA. I'm telling Kathy this on the phone. I'm like, oh, I'm ready to pull my hair out. She said, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a PowerPoint wizard. She called herself something really funny. I'm like, you are? And I'm thinking, okay, what is this? (laughs) That's great, Kathy, but I'm feeling bad. Like I feel already beat up. She's like, why don't you send it to me and I'll do it for you. I mean, she whipped that thing into shape, sends it back to me like three hours later. It was be, it was a masterpiece, a work of art. Uh, that so does not surprise me. Vibes. And she does have such a good heart. So Kathy, we're just giving you a shout out because you're so great. I'll link her interviews in the in the show great. notes too, along great. with our first one on the closet. <laughs> Wonderful. Organizing. Um, I love that story. Well, thank you, Geraldine, for being here. And I look forward, I'm sure we'll find another topic on something that needs to be organized that we can tackle together again. But thank you for being here today. Always a pleasure. You're so welcome. Pleasure to be here. And I just love your show, Michelle. Oh, you're (laughs) such a sweetie. Okay, we'll talk later. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope you gained some new information or inspiration for your life. That is that the essence of this show is to really wake up to what's possible for you to reclaim your beautiful voice and to really learn to love and prioritize yourself. So if you gained any value from any of the conversations you've tuned into, make sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast player. You can do that right now on your phone. And please do consider leaving a rating and review if you have yet to do so on Apple Podcasts. It's actually how more women can find the show. And I really want to grow a community of women who are loving themselves and living full on. So thank you as always for tuning in. And I look forward to reconnecting with you next Wednesday. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.